very much. We at SME Banking Club are very glad to partner with the Supplier Plus and uh, this year's summit. So thank you very much, Marie, and all the team for organizing it and for the, for the cooperation. So uh, now the panel is about the technology. Uh, and uh, I would actually suggest to and invite my panelists to introduce yourself say a little bit about your background, what you're doing right now, and then we start the discussion. So, Georgi, maybe let's start from you. All right. Thank you so, so much, really, for, for the kind invitation. Uh, thank you for the great event. A um, few words about me. I'm the director of Bulgarian FinTech Association, meaning that I'm the head of uh, operations mm -hmm. within the biggest uh, FinTech ecosystem and cluster in the southeastern uh, Europe. Um, Probably this does not mean a lot about you, but you can uh, just imagine uh, in between Greece and Romania, there is uh, this country, Bulgaria, with 7 million uh, people. Um, and we are actually being ranked first by uh, IT uh, specialists per capita, which is something really nice, a really nice precondition to have fintech companies. That's why we have more than 150 of them, um, not only Bulgarian ones, but also uh, foreign ones. Um, so really, in essence, um, I'm the operational lead for, for this uh, cluster that we have in Bulgaria. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Yeogen? Well, thanks. Uh, I'm Yeogen Osmakiosko. Forget about the family name. It's rather long. I'm uh, Moldovan by origins. I'm with the International Finance Corporation, which is part of the World Bank Group, which is part mm -hmm. of the United Nations system. And uh, I'm based in Belgrade in Serbia. Out of there, we cover all the Western Balkans. And uh, I'm one of the few lawyers in the room, since I'm also a lawyer by background. Mm -hmm. All right, Jakub. Hi, my name is Jakub Kopinski, and I work in corporate banking for 12 years already. Uh, now for MBank, when I'm a manager of uh, trade finance sales team, um, people who provide trade finance solutions for corporate clients in Poland. Uh, MBank is one of the biggest bank in Poland. Uh, we cover almost 6 million uh, customers in retail banking, not only in Poland, but also in uh, Slovakia, also in Czechia. And we deal with corporate clients. Uh, we are one of the biggest uh, players on the market for corporate clients. Uh, and we have almost uh, 33,000 of corporate clients mm -hmm. in Poland. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Rudolf? Uh, hi, my name is uh, Rudolf Pfeffer. I'm a counsel at Wolf Ties, where I'm heading the uh, local bank and finance practice uh, in Slovakia. Uh, we have offices in 13 countries uh, across the Central and Eastern Europe and Southeastern Europe uh, that we consider to be our uh, key market. And uh, we were recently involved in a number of uh, uh, really interesting supply chain finance projects, uh, um, most cross-border, which uh, generated a lot of uh, useful comparative insights. Mm -hmm. so I'm mm -hmm. to share some of them today. All right, all right. Okay, so um, as we today and yesterday discussed that digitalization is a tool to make the finance uh, more efficient and more accessible, and among them to smaller businesses, to SMEs, uh, my first question to you will be, uh, and as we are focusing the Central Eastern Europe on that panel, and you represent different countries from the region, what is the pace of the digitalization of supply chain finance? Maybe let's cover receivable finance here as well, in your area and, and in your country. What, what do you see? Georg, maybe let's, let's start from you. All right. Frankly speaking, Bulgaria's supply chain finance is, is still, um, it has a long way to go, let's say. Um, Apart from the, the fact that we have uh, 150 fintech companies in Bulgaria, um, the supply chain finance is just a fraction of it. Uh, to the best of my knowledge, actually, there are not more than, uh, than a couple of uh, fintech companies that, that are really dealing with supply chain finance. We have so many um, issues here, challenges, let's, let's put it this way, uh, with the challenges about the mindset, about the education that we'll uh, deep dive a bit later in the, mm -hmm. um, in the discussion, I believe. Um, but I do believe that uh, there is a bright future um, uh, in front of it. Um, just, just recently, um, I understood that Supplier Plus are interested in Bulgaria as, as a new market. Uh, so in that sense, I got in contact, actually they got in contact with us, that's why I'm here for today, uh, to really uh, represent this ecosystem and uh, to, um, to 
somehow show to you guys that we are we are do open to supply chain finance and uh, I truly believe that uh, some remarkable things could be done for our SMEs. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, yeah. for me it will be a rather difficult to answer a question um, limiting myself to a certain jurisdiction just to, to have a full picture. We are the largest uh, international organization working with the private sector. We're owned by 185 states. Mm -hmm. We have more than 100 offices around the world and f more than 60 years of experience. Looking at uh, those countries that I used to work or I'm working, so I would echo what you're saying, different level uh, of uh, experience, different level of uh, development and implementation. The Western Balkans that I'm covering, even between those Western Balkans six countries, you can see a difference. Serbia being more advanced compared to the other countries. Uh, Moldova, on the other, other hand, which is my home country, and here kudos to Estonian government, which coached us, tutored us, babysitted us in e-governance, is making uh, rather huge steps and advancing well. But again, I would echo what you're saying, but the mindset, certain bottlenecks, and certain things that uh, preclude us uh, to, 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 to be even faster than other countries will be discussed a little bit later. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But again, the future is there. And in, I'll give only one example that uh, we have in the Western Balkans on supply chain development. Mm -hmm. And what we're looking exactly with uh, our already friends and partners, Supplier Plus, how to integrate. And I'm echoing what uh, yesterday we've discussed a bit about interoperability of different partners in this sense. So... More mm -hmm. to come. More to come. <laughs> yes. Yeah, cool. So I think in Polish banks are quite prepared for delivering very yeah. good um, STF solutions for mm -hmm. corporate clients. So software is there, technology is there, but we still have to cope with um, so many compliance things and so many uh, regulatory things which are not digitalized. And um, a big issue for us right now is to create a program which covers not only domestic suppliers, but also international for, mm -hmm. for bigger companies. Mm -hmm. So if you have to onboard um, international clients or if you have to onboard some small entities like micro SMEs, you have to proceed all these things like for big corporate clients. So sometimes it makes these programs not effective and our client have to wait very long to, mm -hmm. to implement this solution. Mm -hmm. So I think this uh, digitalization of the processes is much more needed than digitalization of software and technology. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. When it comes to Slovakia, um, so I believe uh, uh, when it comes to digitization, the financial sector as a whole has made a huge progress over the past couple of years, and uh, the, this trend uh, was even accelerated by the effects of the pandemic. Uh, speaking more specifically about uh, supply chain finance products, uh, I believe there are two perspectives. Uh, one is the macroeconomic perspective. Uh, where we see very fundamental macroeconomic trends affecting the economy, high energy prices, uh, soaring inflation, uh, deteriorating uh, creditworthiness in certain segments of economy. And these trends are you know, too fundamental to be ignored, uh, and they set some natural boundaries for any finance product. Uh, when it, then, then there is the process optimization perspective, uh, where I believe uh, um, the digitized uh, and good quality supply chain finance products can really make a difference, and uh, they can make the working capital financing uh, uh, accessible for uh, many SMEs that would uh, you know, otherwise not even consider external financings due to all the administrative burden and mm -hmm. paperwork involved. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, yeah. So let's go now into details. Because there are really a lot of a lot of things to discuss. Here again, maybe the first let's let's start the discussion of details with you. So you mentioned your projects in uh, Western Balkans. Tell us, please, a bit more on that. How you help digitalize the process there? Well, the the first thing I have to to confess is that um, I've learned only from, by the way, the Estonian delegation about ten years ago that there's a difference between digitizing and digitalizing. Mm -hmm. So these are two different things. And uh, uh, looking back, what we've done in different countries is um, first, digitali first digitizing. So mm -hmm. you have to, to digitize the, the information. Mm -hmm. And then you have to digitalize the processes. Uh, I'll give one specific example that uh, comes from, from Western Balkans. 
uh, working with uh, support from the Swiss government. Mm -hmm. And for you to know, the, within the IFC, we use our own funds, and then we also use uh, funds which are being provided by, by different governments, donors. And in this case, this is the Swiss government which funds our activities in uh, some of the Western Balkan countries. So, basically, we haven't reinvented the, the bicycle, but uh, something comes to my mind now. Uh, I think Marcel Proust said that the, the, the real act of discovering new lands is not finding them, but looking a little bit differently with different eyes. And uh, uh, we looked into about 400 platforms, existing platforms, including our own platform that have mm -hmm. been designed by the International Finance Corporation in different countries. At the end of the day, we decided to go to professionals. And we've, uh, we've outsourced a platform to match uh, suppliers and buyers, suppliers from the Western Balkans with off-takers or buyers from the European Union zone and beyond it. And uh, it's a platform which is being implemented uh, jointly by us uh, with a UK-based company called Achilles. Not necessarily that this is the Achilles and their weak, but well, they call it themselves this way. And um, what we've realized is that the simple matchmaking doesn't work properly thinking ahead of time. And we start uh, the interoperability. And here also the supplier plus comes. And some of the instant factoring companies that are based in EU and are operational in the Western Balkans. So we initiated a discussion about uh, digitalizing the flow of information this time and processes among suppliers and buyers within the platform and on the top having financial institutions, banking and non-banking. One of the banks uh, for instance, in the Western Balkans, has also expressed the interest to be part of that platform as well. So, looking at from different <laughs> angles, uh, uh, having different perspectives, and now uh, bringing also, literally this morning we've discussed also with Maria, and last time here in Tallinn in December, how we can bring Supply Plus, which would bring another dimension, transborder within the EU, because the, the company that we're working with has certain limitations related to jurisdictions. I can give you another example about digitization and digitalization, and this is more about services being provided by the government to citizens and businesses, including access to finance uh, from the same Western Balkans. But there it was more a complex one, since you, as we call it in, in Serbia, we needed a highway where we attach secondary roads. And what we've done uh, with uh, that time, the UK government, British government help as a donor is uh, designing an e-permitting platform, which also has a component attached to it related to access to funds by citizens and individual businesses, mainly small and medium enterprises, which are in need of quick funds and uh, cheap funds. Mm -hmm. And I'll stop there since not to take a lot of time. I used to teach also in the university, so it might take more than an hour mm -hmm. to explain. But again, the, the, the couple of lessons learned, by the way, out of this exercise is that we, uh, as a team, we have underestimated the platforms, mm -hmm. and it was during the pandemic, but we overestimated the private sector. They are not as proactive as we wanted them to be, and as we want them to be. And this is something, as a lesson man, is that these, especially small and medium enterprises in Southeast Europe, we're talking about these kind of countries, uh, they need a bit of uh, babysitting, they need a bit of entrepreneurial, entrepreneurial skills development and assistance. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, mm -hmm. it's a no-go. And mm -hmm. I can tell you that uh, about 50% of our companies, they're really proactive, others, they need a little bit of help shouldering their efforts in order to be active. Mm -hmm. so, but that's something that we have discussed yesterday about the mindset. Mm -hmm. Or to put it a different way, you know the, the ancient China death penalty, the Chinese drop. So you have to be that Chinese drop dropping on their heads all the time and hammering the hair on their brains that they have to act and perform. Yes, yes, I, I very much agree with you. And yes, the topic of interoperability and interoperable data is uh, is very actively discussed uh, I don't know last year probably and this year as well 
And it is really a case when developing a new digital solution, a new digital platform, you should really think whether it is whether the customer needs this, because this is another platform to which I should remember my, my login, my password, and this, um, uh, this annoys customers already. So these new sol solutions should really be integrated into the existing ecosystems, not, not the, another one separate platform, even with the digital partially digital processes. Right. But even more, just mm -hmm. if you don't mind, a couple of words. Uh, I think we, all of us, within the international organizations, within the business associations, I mean, private sector drives reform, uh, governments, we have to think to go another extra mile. Uh, on Monday morning, I had a call and we started to brainwash ourselves and to brainstorm ourselves about a platform to rebuild Ukraine. And whatever we have, it's there, it's known but we need something else. So that's as a team, for instance, within the International Finance Corporation and the World Bank Group. We're now thinking what else is needed, what another layer to be added to be uh, not e-governments, but efficient government. Yesterday, mm -hmm. uh, Sandra was saying yeah. about efficiency. So yeah. e doesn't stand for electronic, it stands for efficiency. Yeah, about so efficiency. especially in this kind of crisis mm -hmm. uh, uh, that uh, we need to, to deal with and the war against Ukraine, thinking about the future and rebuilding the country. Mm -hmm. So yeah. that's something needed else. And it's not only for us, but for, for, for all of us that are involved directly or indirectly yeah. in that. So the that's something world. that, by the way, helps a lot in uh, discussions we had yesterday and today as well, mm -hmm. picking the brains and things. We might be in a silo at the end of the day, working with different organizations uh, as ourselves, but picking the brains of the private sector of professionals, real professionals. I said, I'm a bloody lawyer, what I know. I know just a bit. But picking the brains of professionals helps us a lot. Mm -hmm. Generating ideas. Yeah. yeah. Disruptive technologies. <laughs> yes. Anything what Disruptive is Disruptive ideas. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> if we uh, can come back to the legislations, and Jakob, you mentioned that there is uh, all the compliance uh, uh, things that you are, uh, the banks now are mainly busy with, right? And uh, Rudolf, I'll bring the first question to you and then we'll discuss the business part with the banks and then fintechs uh, area. If we turn to the legislation, which is uh, kind of differs in each country in the region, how it can be, how it can be uh, uh, synchronized to really make this cross-border finance on different platforms possible? I think it's a Really good question. Uh, when, when, when it comes to legislation and uh, regulation, I think it's fair to say that um, across uh, the CE we have already a solid uh, regulatory framework in place. Mm -hmm. uh, obviously, it can still be improved, uh, but uh, we have you know certain key areas of law already harmonized on a new level, which is a good thing. Uh, but as it happens with uh, uh, regulation and technology, uh, the technology will always be one step yeah. ahead of the regulation. Technology comes first. Yeah. And uh, this would naturally uh, generate some residual ambiguity. And the question really is whether uh, uh, the business stakeholders would be prepared to accept and absorb and embrace this residual amb ambiguity including the opportunities and risks which are, which are, which are involved. Uh, uh, and, well, if, 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 if the pandemic serves as an example, I'm an optimist here, because we saw that a lot of businesses were incredibly uh, resilient, uh, ready to adopt a new digitized solution. And Who didn't adopt, processes. just closed. <laughs> and we don't see them on the market but, but, anymore. But, 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 but speaking of, uh, of, of regulation, <laughs> it is also important to realize that we have uh, 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 hard laws and soft laws. We have laws which are written in statutes and regulations, and then we have soft laws which are uh, created by regulators by issuing various guidelines, uh, consultation papers, etc. Uh, and these soft laws, uh, in my opinion, uh, this is the area where uh, the supply chain finance community could play a, a more active role in uh, you know, fostering communication with, with regulators. From our experience, most of the regulators are keen to learn the market insights, keen to understand the underlying issues and how can be solved. And uh, you know, by embracing this opportunity, um, 
and participating in these discussions, I believe that the community mm -hmm. can participate in making the regulation better, more friendly, more advanced. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. Evgen, do you contribute as, as IFC to the, to the development of regulations in the region? To develop what? Do you contribute as an IFC to the development of such regulations here in the yes, region? Yes, uh, this is something that we're doing um, almost on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. And um, again, as a lawyer, I'm for smart regulations, not for over-regulating or under-regulating. Because we could see different <laughs> crises, by the way, and uh, that uh, emerged uh, after improperly uh, taking decisions. I'll give it a disaster in Turkey, reading this morning that there were some amnesties for companies which were building those buildings without any standards. And at the end of the day, the government said, okay, so since you built, you have it. So now they fall as a domino effect. So it's about smart regulations. It's about impact assessments from different perspectives, environmental, fiscal, financial, tax, etc. And uh, another thing is that you have to have a really strong partner in the private sector, as I was saying at the beginning. Mm -hmm. The governments, they will be reluctant to change anything. They're okay the way they are. Yesterday, we were speaking about the trust in our governments. In none of the countries that I have worked, I have lived, you will see such a trust as you could see it in Estonia. Yesterday, example. So not in Moldova, not in Romania, not in the Western Balkans, not in other countries. So what happens then? Then you have to bring the private sector mm -hmm. and you have to work with the associations, with the chambers, uh, and to use and to leverage any, anything possible. Uh, international commitments. Uh, within the World Bank Group, there are a couple of instruments that we're doing, like um, loans for reforms or policy loans that are attached against certain activities. And if you do not adopt certain regulations and then they're checked by us the way they're also implemented, enacted at the end of the day, then you wouldn't disburse those loans to the governments. And it's a stick and a carrot at the end mm -hmm. of the day, as yesterday also has been said. So yes, we do. Long answer to a short question. Mm -hmm. Yes, we do. And uh, the more private sector involvement uh, mm -hmm. they have, the better. Mm -hmm. Much better. Mm -hmm. All right. Jakob, I would like to come back to you now uh, and uh, to discuss more in detail the products that you have in MBank. So, uh, uh, in general, when, um, when we do our annual analysis and studies on the, uh, which digital tools and digital channels are available for the SMEs in the Central Eastern Europe, we see that 30% of the banks uh, in the region, and these are mainly Polish banks, uh, implemented, so integrated the trade finance uh, module into their digital channels, so online banking and mobile banking applications. And MBank also has uh, such a module. So tell us uh, uh, what, what does it include, or does it cover um, fully digital process for letter of credits, for, for guarantees? How does it work? And then let's also maybe get closer a bit to the supply chain finance okay, products. So I will talk now about another platform, but we are really proud about our platform. <laughs> so uh, this is an application which is also available online, but also you can access uh, the electronic banking from your phone. Mm -hmm. And you can just do everything which is needed for your company just using your phone. And in this electronic app, we invested all our possible sources to, to develop because we know that this is something which uh, differs us from our competitors on the market. So our newest thing in this app is some kind of uh, payment gateway for our clients yep. to meet buyers and sellers at the same time and to um, make these payments between them um, immediately. Uh, so this is a very nice solution and some kind of bestseller on the market. But this online banking is very complex structure, so you can find every banking product there. Also trade finance products, which are covered by my team. Um, so you can um, issue a guarantee, you can ask for letter of credit or all the other um, type of payment collections. Mm -hmm. Especially we made a quite huge progress in guarantees business because uh, almost five years ago we decided to totally um, digitalize the process of issuing guarantee. So now we are able to sign up agreement with our client electronically. Uh, so we are sending a file to our client, which is sign up with electronic signature. Mm -hmm. 
and then it's signed by the bank also with this kind of signature. This agreement is implemented to the system, and our client is able to ask for a guarantee from our electronic banking system. And then we proceed this request, and the guarantee is issued also in electronic form, in the form of a file which is signed by banking representatives. Mm -hmm. And this solution is much more effective for customers because they don't have to um, send us lots of papers waiting for decisions and so on. And also, um, we reduce the risk of um, unsuccessful delivery of such a guarantee because especially in COVID time, it happened many times that the guarantee wasn't delivered to the beneficiary. Mm -hmm. So because they didn't receive a paper, um, the courier service was mm -hmm. you know, yeah. very bad that time. And now we are just sending a file which is signed and which is in right, so mm -hmm. we don't have this risk. Um, the same thing is with letters of credits. They can be um, requested totally online and the process is online, but there is still some space to improve uh, in this area, especially in terms of verification of documents, in terms of um, common standards for all this procedure with checking documents, but it's something which is like for bigger discussion than mm -hmm. right now. Uh, we also have some separate tool for uh, supplier financing. So mm -hmm. we have an uh, invoice net um, tool. This is the name of this tool. Uh, so our customers can send us invoices directly from uh, their uh, accounting systems. Uh, and then we can discount these uh, invoices or we can use them uh, in supplier financing programs or we can just um, use some credit lines to finance mm -hmm. such type of invoices. Mm -hmm. So I think our app is quite complex, but it still needs uh, constant development because market is very challenging and we have really big competitors on Polish market. Mm -hmm. So yeah. this is the only one way to, to, to still grow, just to invest in this app. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, just, just to mention that Polish banks are top 10, I would say, are really very digitalized one. That's why, yes, the competition for the digital tools is really severe. I yeah, it's say. also very nice to notice that in Polish market, almost 70% of guarantees are issued now in this electronic, electronic form. Way. So mm -hmm. this is now some kind of standard. Yeah, mm -hmm. People don't yeah. want to have papers People anymore. Don't want, yeah, right. If to mention a little more, uh, a little more about the supply finance, uh, uh, Jakob, mm -hmm. you mentioned that this product, and we all know that historically this product uh, was um, sold for the corporate customers or larger SMEs, kind of mid market, let's say. What's on your, because of course the processes were either manual or semi manual, let's say, and still this is not digitalized. We have no full digital cycle, let's say, for this. Uh, what do you, how do you see as you are in charge of, the, of sales? What are the opportunities and possibilities to add more smaller businesses? into that product, into the scheme? What should be done from the bank side, from the environmental side, governmental side? Mm -hmm. So micro SMEs are covered in my bank by retail banking. Mm -hmm. And some um, services are already provided for them. Uh, so um, if the company wants to issue an invoice, so they can log in into the banking system mm -hmm. and then send invoice to the customer. And when they are sending an invoice, there is some kind of magical button. Do you yeah. want to send this invoice to yes. the factoring? Yeah. Yes. And you can select the invoice which you want to be financed, and then mm -hmm. you are going to receive the money immediately on your account. So this is quite a nice tool, especially for such a micro um, mm -hmm. owners of companies. Uh, because they can predict the cost of the transactions before making this transaction. There's an information how much it will cost you. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is a nice tool for them to, to, to manage the cash flows, yeah? But on the other hand, it's quite hard to implement such a micro uh, companies to the complex structures of supplier chain financing, which we have in corporate banking because the procedure for corporate clients are mm -hmm. more complicated. And some micro... Uh, entrepreneurs don't want to deal with such a <laughs> lots of um, things to to fulfill and to, to do for a bank. So I had a cases in my uh, career. Then we have like 200 micro uh, suppliers in one program, mm -hmm. and then our buyer decided to uh, implement more of them, and it made this program uh, less effective. Mm -hmm. So they just decided to to start a cooperation with some kind of fintech from foreign country 
because uh, the verification process and the implementation process was much more easier. This company um, didn't provide any type of KYC, to be honest. So it was like system ready for, for the customer to use without any verification. So we, we lost several deals for, for such mm -hmm. a new companies. Yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yes, I would like actually just to comment that this button that you mentioned, the invoice finance or factoring, uh, let's say. So yes, really there are several offers in the Polish market right now. Well, most of the top banks uh, implemented ecosystems for their SME customers, uh, meaning that in the mobile or in the uh, online banking, there is a module for the e-invoicing, which is in Poland uh, becoming obligatory from the next year. In uh, European countries, either obligatory now or will be obligatory in the next two, three years. So uh, is the, it is an invoicing tool and also online accounting. So, um, and when you, uh, really when you issue the invoice, finally there is a button and I think this is a really correct uh, and um, uh, correct and very in the context of the business way to sell the factoring or info invoice finance for micro speakers. They issue the invoice, they don't plan much uh, for the future, they issue the invoice and they here they see the button and they can decide whether I want to finance this invoice right now or not. Because these old ways of selling uh, factoring, like calling you know, nine, 9 in the morning and asking, do you need factoring? Uh, well, uh, many of the SMEs don't know what does it mean. We will talk uh, now uh, about the education that you, Georg, also mentioned. Uh, but, you know, customers are not wake up and they're not thinking about the banking, they're thinking about their business. So um, the right way it is actually to sell in the very business context. So if the customer issue now and know either the counterparty will pay later or the term of payment is really long and they need the financials now, that there is a quick button and quick decision in one, two, three clicks, finance this invoice right now. Uh, I would like to, before we ask for the questions, and I do invite, uh, prepare yours here in the room and, and online as well. Uh, let's talk about the education, because Georgi, you mentioned this is kind of one of the challenges that you have on Bulgarian markets. So let's, let's start from you. Which, which perspective do you see uh, based on the landscape uh, in, Bulgaria's, uh, in Bulgarian fintechs? What are the opportunities to start developing digital supply chain finance uh, products and, and education? What is your role in educating businesses in Bulgaria in that area? Right. So, uh, first thing first, uh, when talking about um, SCF, uh, we have to uh, say that it's part of the digital finance uh, trend, let's say. So, in that sense, uh, it's not educating only about one simple thing, one category, let's say, uh, of mm -hmm. fintech. It's uh, covering the whole, the whole spectrum. Uh, in that sense, this is what we do in our association, actually, together with the European Commission, EBRD. Um, just recently, we were working on the uh, financial literacy framework for the whole European U Union. And uh, just a couple of days ago, I've been approached by the European Commission for uh, creating the very first uh, financial literacy hackathon in, in Europe. Uh, so these are, these are the practical uh, first steps, let's say, um, that could be taken first on a supranational level if you don't really, really have a reliable political system, let's say, just like in Bulgaria at the moment. Uh, if you haven't noticed for the last two years, we have um, these five, five elections in a row. We are now waiting for the, the fifth one, actually. So um, whenever we don't really have this, um, once again, reliable political system, we go straight to, to Europe and we start working with them. Eventually, what we do is to create a new regulations or directives that, uh, that are um, in a couple of years' time uh, being transposed to Bulgaria and then into our Bulgarian law. So in that sense, um, fintech and the education about fintech should uh, first start um, from, the, from the people that could really do it. Um, and in that sense, uh, we have the supranational um, uh, supranational uh, push, let's say, uh, coming from the European Commission, EBRD. Then we have on a national level uh, in Bulgaria, we created the very first strategy for financial literacy uh, for all Bulgarians um, in different groups. It's, it's, it could be adults, it could be youngsters and so on. Um, but it's, it's um, a long run. I mean, it, it takes a lot to make so that you put digital finance into the... Um, <coughs> 
into the new books, let's say, of uh, into the new manuals for for children, uh, and eventually they start realizing what is the difference between between the technology blockchain and then crypto, and. Only then, only you have this very base um, build up uh, properly, uh, only when you have it uh, done as it's supposed to be, then you can start really evolving. You can do the uh, SCF, uh, SC supply chain finance, mm -hmm. right? So um, in that sense, it, it, it takes a lot of time. Uh, the good thing is that there are uh, European projects. Uh, one of them is called Technical Support Instrument. So um, these are funds and actually, obviously, uh, uh, technical support coming from the European Commission, uh, EU funds in the end, uh, that, you can, that you can really use for your local uh, system. Hopefully, we will uh, have uh, really soon the, the very first, because of, the, uh, of this action plan that, that we got created in, into the um, uh, financial literacy strategy for Bulgaria, Hopefully, we will have soon the very first financial literacy portal uh, that will be available. It's just a website available for every Bulgarian. So within it, we have a special um, a special section which is related to digital finance. And in there, somewhere there should be supply chain finance, but at the same time, it should be crypto, it should be the blockchain as a technology. Uh, it should be so many new things that we see, uh, which are, um, and just to, uh, touch upon the, the last question that you had about regulation. Most of them, they're still not in the regulation. However, we have to make so that our regulators that are following and that are running uh, by, by the laws that have been created, uh, they're on the cutting edge of technology. So we do not, um, we do not really allow um, bad technologies, bad financial schemes to, to appear and exist and thrive in, in countries like, like Bulgaria, but not only. Um, so in that sense, um, the education, and just to wrap it up, uh, the education is really an essential part to have uh, development for the digital finance. And uh, then if we uh, go a bit uh, deep uh, to, to supply chain finance. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Jakub, do you educate your customers? And let's probably discuss one more thing here. Do we want from the business customers to know precisely what does it mean, uh, supply chain finance or factoring? Do we want them to know these words? Yeah, I think it's uh, very good, uh, which Georgi mentioned, that we have to educate still clients about this program, especially micro SMEs. Mm -hmm. Because um, some suppliers' um, financing programs had a bad reputation on Polish market because it started with uh, some expectance from uh, big buyers that I want to make money on this program. So just give me your half of your margin and transfer it to me from my buyers, yeah? So that was very, very bad news for, for such small entities that they're, they're part of the program which makes money for, for the buyer. And now I think that the situation has changed. Uh, suppliers now, uh, I mean buyers care more now about suppliers. They want to deliver them solution which is profitable for them with some kind of effect. And now we have to educate some small entities how it works and what is the biggest profit for them. Mm -hmm. uh, and there are no hidden uh, advantages for, for the buyers as well. Mm -hmm. I just uh, uh, thought on the, on the way probably how banks are communicating right now these products, which are really difficult especially for smaller businesses, because if corporates probably have some uh, other person or a team at least that really understands what is it all about. Now for SMEs, there is no chance that any of the SMEs will know the product as good as the product managers, let's say, in the banks or in the fintechs. Uh, when you do the analysis and the, the search on the websites of the banks, what, which products they have for the business customers, now what I notice is that the the structure and the information that is uh, is described the way as bank think, not as mm -hmm. business customer think. So like uh, our products, working capital finance, uh, trade finance, supply chain finance, factoring, apply for factoring. Oh my God, for small business, what does it mean, apply for factoring? What does it mean? What does this word mean? This is scary for them. And in Poland now, um, there is a trend to... Um, to speak to the customers with a simple language. So to speak the language actually which customer understands. So maybe not apply 
for a factoring because I don't know what what does it mean for me as a as a as a business customer. Maybe the rights will be financed this invoice or or something like this because uh, I'm not sure that the business customers should know what is the definition of supply chain finance means. Of course, mm -hmm. right? So um, I've created uh, a solution for some kind of micro SMEs. And there were like self-employed people uh, collecting yeah. apples from fields yeah. and selling yeah. to the buyers, like very, just very low, let's say low educated people, yeah? When and I receive the payment right now, click this button, yeah, and, and this goes, whatever we call it in the bank, it call, can be called factoring or whatever, but for the, for the customer, this is, do you want to finance this right now? Do you want to get paid right now? Yes, that's all. Right, we have questions. I do see questions uh, uh, on the website. So um, can I just jump in yeah, on, on sure, the education, sure, sure. just to uh, to wrap it up this this part? Because in the end of the day, you have to work on um, holistically when talking about education. First, you have to work with the private sector. Then you have to work with with the public sector, the guys that will eventually regulate you. Um, thirdly, you have to work. Um, with, with academia, with the people that will produce the talent pool that you then need for, for your business. In, and in the very end, you should work with, uh, with the so-called civil society. Um, so from this perspective, it's called the quadruple helix model of innovation. So whenever you want to produce something that is really innovative, you have to take in consideration these four key stakeholders that I just mentioned. So from this part, from that perspective, we are, as an association in Bulgaria, uh, we have not one but two master degree programs. Uh, we, we go in, uh, in high schools, uh, mathem mathem mm -hmm. mathematical high schools, right? Um, then we have another bachelor's degree, we have a fintech hackathon, so we try to uh, work out uh, and talk about uh, finance on every step of, of your education. Um, so this, this is, I believe, the key. So only when we have the proper understanding of, again, what, what is supply chain, uh, how does it work, um, and how does it uh, really, how could you benefit um, as you being part of one of these four things that I mentioned, civil society, academia, public sector, and private sector, only then we can really uh, say, okay, now, supply chain finance could thrive. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If I may just add, and this is some of the observations of ours, um, exactly as you're saying, looking at the, 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 the results, we've seen that these results are coming from some of the R&D centers. Now, I'll give one of the examples of Continental, the R&D center in Novi Sad. Look what Volkswagen does. The R&D center is not even in Germany, but it's in Tel Aviv. So, Exactly as you're saying, the holistic approach. And uh, we were surprised, by the way, we've done an assessment uh, from HR perspective, IT perspectives, hardware, software, and uh, legal perspectives of uh, the readiness of uh, digitization and digitalization mm -hmm. in some of our countries. Unbelievable law. Unbel if laws are there, that's okay. HR was one of the lowest within the public administration. So, and these are the guys that have to provide services to the, pub, to the private sector and to citizens. So capacity building has to be part of any of our activities, as advisory activities. And not as those consultants in jokes, you know, that's coming consultant <laughs> and it's, it's not a sheep, it's a bloody dog, give it back, you know, like mm -hmm. these kind of things. You have to work with them all the time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, I will read now the questions that's for us to answer all of them. <clears throat> Georgi, the first one will be to you. Uh, you mentioned that you don't allow fintechs of poor quality to enter the market. What are some key criteria that you have had to implement to filter out such solutions? <laughs> okay, that's a tricky one. Oh, uh, <laughs> but first of all, uh, we as an um, association, as a cluster, uh, because we've been um, li uh, not licensed but registered as a cluster uh, on these European uh, cluster collaboration platform anyway, uh, we ourselves, we cannot really say to somebody, you do not enter to our market. We cannot really do it. What we could do is, if you're a good company, if, if you have a, a good financial business, sound business model, uh, then you can be introduced to everybody that, that we have. Uh, and just to give you an example here, there are many crypto schemes out there. Uh, of course, uh, some of them uh, have been created in Bulgaria. Um, we had uh, some crashes that, that we've seen. And uh, frankly speaking, we we don't have crypto schemes inside of our association because we have 70 plus members. So we try to stay aside, but you know, to be on the safe side, but to, to really know who is out there. 
so whenever something happens, we try to mitigate the damage, to mitigate the damage for the whole ecosystem. So uh, if there is, um, I don't know, some, some kind of um, uh, bad reputation, we try to say, okay, these are these guys who just came or uh, th 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 that, th that has been created and established in Bulgaria because there is lack of this law and the other law, uh, just, like, just like now in, with the crypto. Uh, we are still uh, working really hard on the MIC regulation in, for that the crypto regulation um, uh, in Europe, but still we are far behind of, uh, of what we have to have in Bulgaria. Uh, and in between this time, Bad, bad things will happen, that's for sure. Uh, that, that's what happens when, whenever you have an industry thriving, really moving forwards and disrupting what, what we've seen so far. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And do you dismiss uh, some fintechs that I know having some knockout criteria, let's say, if they are your members already? Do you have such a... We don't really have any any cases like this at least as of as of today uh, but we do have cases where um, companies that are uh, let's say it's shady mm -hmm. that tried to enter because uh, entering in our uh, ecosystem meaning that you apply you have a board of directors that will uh, look uh, into your uh, application documents we will look into your business model you look into the the People that are behind the whole uh, the whole business model, uh, whether it's a platform or some kind of a product or service, uh, and only if they're if these eight guys are really really convinced that you're supposed to be part of the ecosystem, only then you, you can enter it. Uh, and believe me, these guys are much um, older than me or wiser than me, I would say. Um, but but still. Um, it is growing, and um, because of the lack of, uh, of regulation, because of lack of laws, uh, we might still see uh, in the next couple of years uh, these, these bad, uh, bad think tanks going, mm -hmm. going up and down and all over all the right. place. All right, all right. Now the next question will be to all of the panelists. What is one single thing that is preventing the development of supply chain finance in your country and the sea region overall? What is the, the one thing, if changed, could spur the development of supply chain finance? Rudolf, could we start from you this time? One thing. Uh, well, uh, it's, <laughs> it's a fairly complex question. Uh, uh, I think it's, uh, uh, it, it, it's the mindset. It was, it was discussed a couple of times uh, already. Mm -hmm. uh, I believe that uh, people are still not used to work in a completely digitized environment, mm -hmm. process all you know, the, the, the required steps to be taken in a digitized environment and be sure that this particular solution or structure, apart from the fact that it's very convenient, is also legally enforceable. So it's a mindset question and all right. a tolerance question. Yeah, mindset is a difficult question, not a simple, no simple answer on that. Yeah, well, for me, it would be some kind of the base database where you can find all the needed information to fulfill all this procedure with identification and implementation mm -hmm. of uh, SMEs and other part of suppliers. Probably something which was mentioned uh, one day ago uh, by Estonian girl, I've forgotten the name from the government. Sandra. She, yeah, mm -hmm. she was presenting a very nice solution. So I would dream about such a solution in Poland. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, you again. Well. I wouldn't repeat what has been said, mindset, etc., but uh, thinking, again, based on the experience and the, the pandemic, I think we, uh, Southeast European countries, uh, all of us, I mean the private sector, the governments, business associations, clusters, by the way, you're saying about the cluster, some of the most active in the Western Balkans are the automotive clusters. We have to be proactive and active. Since we are living in a competitive world. Look what happens. Who learned fast from the pandemic crisis? Asian companies. They're investing huge in Southeast Europe. Huge. Why? Because our European companies learn that they need to localize their suppliers. Mm -hmm. But they're not fast enough to start the localization. So, the Asian companies investing in free markets that we have in Southeast Europe, or free lands, to put it this way, yeah? uh, greenfields, brownfields, and they benefit, they start to benefit from this nearshoring. 
again, having their own production. That's what I'm saying. It, it's, it's a healthy competition between our Southeast uh, European markets and companies and whatnot, and Asians. But that's an observation. And even more, now we're not speaking only about the nearshoring, we're speaking about the friend shoring. Since what we've observed again, the big OEMs, the big tier one companies, they have their pools of suppliers, and they certainly cannot afford to shift the supplier from an Asian country, which supplies the necessary volumes with the local supplier, which has the quality, is there, but not necessarily the volumes. I'll give one example. It's not out of the blue sky, it's not th theory. It's one of the bus makers in one, in one of the central European countries of ours. He was telling me that the CEO that, look, I had a verbal agreement with another company from the Western European uh, countries to supply me batteries for my e-buses. In a couple of weeks, after our verbal agreement, I got back to him to conclude the contract. He said, no, I cannot anymore. I've got already a contract for 10 years to supply my batteries. So think about the magnitude that we're speaking about that. Mm -hmm. That's something that we have to consider. So we have to be more proactive. We have to nail down all the possibilities and we have to be in our markets as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All of us, all of us. And this kind of, by the way, Proactive. venues yeah. and summits are a real good venue and platform to discuss and to, to have that nurturing between ourselves right. and French Right, right. Georgi. Yeah, brilliant. I totally agree with this. And um, I, would, I would simply say one thing, and it's trust. And then this trust means a lot. I mean, how you build the trust? Uh, you have so many uh, questions behind, uh, behind it. So, like... The first thing is about, okay, we already discussed it, it's education, it's about knowledge, it's about knowing the financial landscape, the, the, knowing that there is such thing as supply chain finance, uh, what are the benefits behind it, and so on and so forth. Uh, but then you have another question, which is, how are you going to, to transfer this knowledge over to these people? The one thing is to have uh, this on a website, to have it, uh, just like you said, uh, Jacopo, somewhere there, like a, a place where th that is really uh, easily ac accessible. But then you have um, events like this. It's awareness campaigns that you, that you do through events. So this would be, um, I would say, a huge, a big thing for us. So if we uh, held a uh, conference such like this one today, but in the Balkans, no matter whether it's in Bulgaria, Serbia, Romania, anywhere, somewhere there, but with the right people, just like the guys that we had uh, today and yesterday, with the right key stakeholders, only then we can go into the minds of the right people, really to have on the other side the bankers, uh, to have the, the SMEs, um, to have the support from the highest level, just like we had yesterday and today, uh, from the government. But not only, um, I, I do believe that there is a huge power behind supranational uh, unions, like uh, the European Union, uh, you, could, you could have OECD, EBRD, all of these mm -hmm. uh, acronyms that really stands for um, knowledge on an international level. So if you bring all these people in one place, if you start preaching about the benefits, of course, some risks, uh, risks that, uh, that might occur behind uh, this business model, only then you can build the trust that is so needed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. Elena. We have a question. Mark on this topic as well. Okay. Yeah. So on this topic of, uh, of adoption in, in the, the Central Eastern European region, I think that the Baltic region is a bit similar. Uh, awareness about the benefits of the solution is definitely a thing, and that is what at least the Supplier Plus we are quite actively working mm -hmm. on, whether it's through events or sales and, and whatnot. But um, in terms of, of, of sales, there is actually a bit more to it, I would say. And um, the trouble is that other than Poland, I would say a lot of the economies in the region are fairly small. And uh, a lot of the companies, as a result, are fairly small as well. And uh, payables finance or supply chain finance is a 
solution that typically you know starts with the tier one companies. So, uh, so, so there are not enough of such companies in the region. So I think mm -hmm. there are economic reasons that is uh, holding supply chain finance back as well. And and then you know the LP companies you know have um, if they're locally owned, I think it's a mindset issue because being helpful towards your suppliers is not something that a lot of companies do. It is sometimes even the exact opposite. Uh, the more you can exploit your supplier base, the better. Uh, mm -hmm. so, so it's hopefully less and less of that, but that's the trouble with some local companies. And then if it's a Western uh, larger corporation, then oftentimes they might have supply chain finance programs for their key markets or large markets, but they do not cover the region. Mm -hmm. And then uh, getting a more local uh, platform to service these is possible, as we know from experience, but you have to go through headquarters, and that's, uh, that's a blocker. Mm -hmm. So Can just, just, just to indicate more yeah. that there are key like decision-making and economic blockers as well, but I think we can overcome them. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Thank you. I, I totally agree with what you just said, uh, Uwe. Th there is only one thing. I would disagree that, that it's a matter of size. Uh, uh, I would say that it's a matter of maturity. So you could have a small company, um, SME, that is really mature enough to understand it, to use it properly, to, to use supply chain finance. Uh, uh, and at the same time, you could have a big company that, that doesn't really uh, pay any attention to it. Um, and then you have, you were, you're totally right with the thing that in Bulgaria, although that we have 150 fintech companies, um, more than 60 are FDIs. Uh, they're, being, uh, they're exporting heavily, which is really nice for our economy. Uh, frankly speaking, that's one of the um, sole drivers that we have in, in our economy. We have the automotive cluster. Uh, I totally agree with this, but still. Um, and just like what you said, uh, the, the, the main decision makers of these of this, of this uh, FDIs that are the most mature ones, not, uh, not the uh, biggest uh, companies per se, but the matured ones, uh, are actually outside of Bulgaria. They don't really uh, care about the, the ecosystem itself or not as much as uh, to where the head, their headquarter is. So in that sense, this is a big struggle for us as an association to really work hard to prove what are the benefits for these companies to start investing not only where their headquarter is once again, but in, in, the, in, in the place where they are, I mean, where, where they work from, because you could have customer experience, sorry, customer support um, from Bulgaria, but also R&D of this IT development from Bulgaria. And it's not only about employers branding that you have to present in front of the, the other people, it's really creating the ecosystem that you later need. And that's why we incorporate all of these FDIs, or at least uh, a fair share of them, into the education that we do, into these master degree programs, into the bachelors, the hackathon, and so on and so forth. So it's um, the holistic approach, I would definitely say, but you have so many new um, and different challenges to, to what you probably have seen in, in the Baltics. And I would completely agree with Georgi, if I may. Uh, uh, recently, some of the, the OEMs, tier one companies mainly, they were saying, look, we have it, it's good. We don't have it, it's not bad. So working there with SMEs and out of the comp our companies that we're working with, I think only about 5% are large companies. All mm -hmm. the rest are small and medium enterprises, which are in our Western Balkan region that we're mm -hmm. covering with these activities. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, yeah. Do you have any other questions or maybe comments uh, here in the room? All right, so, so we are good here then. I have one question from the, from the online uh, attendees, uh, Eugen, to you. Uh, you mentioned that the private sector is slow to adapt FIN platforms, financial platforms. Yesterday, education on the matter was highlighted as the key element. Yeah, we discussed it as well. What initiatives could the platforms and financial organizations use to improve their educational efforts? I guess we answered very much the yeah, question. Yeah, we covered Yeah, <laughs> yeah we, covered, we covered that. Uh, right, then, if we don't have questions uh, in the room, then I suggest uh, a final so-called wrap-up question from my side. Uh, if, um, if you could imagine, or, or if you do not take into account the barriers or the challenges that exist in, for example, uh, legislations, uh, mindset, if 
we do not take into account these barriers, like the, the, the market is ideal, let's say, for the, for the digital processes of supply chain finance, how would you imagine the best or the ideal digital supply chain finance process? either from the organization, from the bank side, from the fintech side, or from the business customer side. I can give you my dream, let's say, <laughs> while, while you are thinking on that, how I would imagine and how I would like as being an SME customer in Poland uh, to, to be included in such kind of finance, let's say. So you mentioned this uh, e-invoice and the button that finance, finance your invoice. And if to add one more layer to that, and again, the technology, as we discussed, the technology exists on the market. So the main barriers to the digital transformation is not the technology at all, because the technology exists or it will appear very fast when the demand is on the market, right? So this is, this is not the main barrier. Um, so if we add to the layer, uh, the BFM modules, so-called business financial management modules, that are, I don't know why, but very rarely used by the banks right now in the online and mobile banking platform. So I, for example, as an SME customer, would like to open my mobile application or online application, see the dashboard with the cash flow projection, and I see whether I have money now, whether I will have them next week, and if I see that next week, I see the projection that there is a red saldo, so I will not have enough money, for example, to pay counterparties, employees, etc., or taxes maybe. Uh, and there is, uh, I click in this red, <laughs> my red saldo, and there is a click, so either I can finance the, my invoices to the counterparties, either I can, via the factoring, or I can finance it via using of supply chain finance. For example, you can finance this invoice to that supplier by clicking here. Or I can be offered, I don't know, working capital loan, overdraft, something. And I click there, and there is a, a really uh, fast decision uh, that doesn't require me go anywhere, call nowhere, just quick finance, because I am a SME, I don't have time to go to the branch, I don't have time to call the call center, I don't have time to think which product I better use from the ones that are described on the, on the bank's website, from this 10 or more options, which one should I use and apply? This is my vision and this is how I would uh, like to receive the offers from banks and fintechs uh, because, um, as I mentioned, as banks implement an ecosystem now, the data uh, is in the banks because banks have transactions data with PSD2. Uh, the transactions from all the banks can be, can be integrated, right? Then the invoice data, if not available now, will be available, I don't know, next year. I think that the receivable finance actually will change with the availability of invoice data. Then if the banks uh, implement uh, online accounting, then as much data as the bank can have on the business customer, they have. So now this is the time to use this data to really offer the products in the very context, in the right, very right moment, uh, in the context of the business, in this concrete situation when the customer might really need it. How do you see this? Yakov, do you, do you have something in mind? How would you build the ideal mm, digital well, sales processes for trade finance and supply chain finance? I think if the process is clear and you don't have to fulfill all these requirements, then the biggest thing is just to be um, profit for a company. So mm -hmm. um, to make a product which is uh, designed for a company and for suppliers. So I would love to make something which is uh, especially for this type of companies which are in this supplier chain financing, not to sell them a banking product, which mm -hmm. is hard to, um, hard to create specially for them, but something which is designed specially for such people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. The way you put it, KISS principle, keep it simple and sweet. Exactly. Or you can put it, KISS, but simple and stupid <laughs> for stupid people like me, for instance, for that. For that. The KISS principle, yeah. All right. Georgi, do you have something in mind? 
I would say uh, whenever we are talking about digital finance, whenever we are talking about uh, technology into the financial sector, we are talking about one simple thing that was already mentioned, it's about efficiency. It's about making so that uh, you have more resources for more uh, meaningful things. So in that sense, uh, I do believe that if all of these burdens about regulation and the, the single mar market really opens up uh, to the way that we would like to see it, um, then we'll have more funds for something that is more meaningful, that we can invest in, in more uh, good things for us as, uh, as a society. And uh, eventually, ESG will not be something to only laugh about and really uh, be, be somehow to... to Detest it, you know, to don't don't like it, but uh, really to to put real efforts and investments in it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Rudolf, if the legislation is not a barrier, what will what will be the ideal process for you? I think you named it already. As long as the solution uh, allows uh, you know, execution of all the processes, which are one click away, which can be done on your mobile. Uh, which uh, reduces the need for you to log into your computer, uh, scan documents, etc. It's very close to an ideal solution, in my view. Maybe even without scanning, because if we are talking about interoperable data, no scanning will be needed at all. So, <laughs> yeah. All right. Thank you very much, my panel. Georgi, Eugen, Jakub, Rudolf. Thank you very much, and thank you, our attendees, for being active. Thank you very much. Thank you. Cheers.